Hey guys, welcome to Wrestling Days and welcome to this opinions video. This is your thoughts, your theories, your opinions. This is for SmackDown and uh, if you don't know how this works, after every Raw, SmackDown, premium live event, I go onto my X account, put a message out there saying I want your feedback and uh, we take that feedback and then we uh, discuss it in these videos. So the next one we'll do will be straight after Raw if you want to take part in the next one. Uh, but let's get through it, shall we? Uh, because we've got a lot to get through. We've also got a look at the match scores from the live stream and we've also got the current show score as well so ryan said you can't just cut off one of the greatest promo segments like that mate it's just so dumb this show needs to go to netflix asap now i've got a, quite a bit to say on this because i like the ending of uh, the show but ryan might also be correct right so for me the ending of the show that I saw was The Rock saying, how come there's an age gap between you and your siblings? I'll tell you why. Because you was a mistake. Cody takes that information on board and slaps The Rock in response. The Rock kind of goes back to the corner. Show comes to an end. Now, I saw people kind of criticizing the ending, saying that they didn't think the ending was quite right or whatever it was. And I couldn't quite understand that point because for me, that was such a big moment and it was so impactful. And I don't know really what else you could have done after that that would have made it any better. Like we get the real good stuff of Cody slapping the rock, which could go onto T-shirts. It's going to be in video packages. Like it feels like a moment, right? Certainly a response to the rock slapping Cody. So it feels like a moment. Um, people probably do want more, but you're meant to want more, right? You're meant to want to tune in on Monday to see what Cody has to say. Tune in next week to see what the rock's got to say. For me, we got a big moment. Oh my God, what just happened? Show comes to a close. So I really don't mind that. But I found out that not everyone got that ending not everyone saw the same thing in certain markets apparently the rock was still talking as the show came to an end some people didn't see the line or hear the line about how cody was a mistake and they didn't see the slap so there's a good chance that ryan is one of those people and missed out on all of that stuff that i just said so yeah this, it, it makes it very difficult having conversations with people about the ending because i don't quite know what people saw uh, for me, I like the slap. I like the ending. It, it feels dramatic. It feels OMG. I don't know really what else they could have done. You know, we could have heard The Rock respond, but that's what next week is for. So I, I like it. But if it was cut off and you never got to see that stuff, completely agree. I completely agree. I think that um, I don't know that Netflix will fix things. I don't quite know how that's going to work. I mean, I suppose they can go into an overrun, but I don't quite know what their structure is going to be like. You know, is the show just going to have its own space? And so it doesn't matter if it overruns or is it going to be a case that it is going to be on like a channel? Do you know what I mean? Where it's, it's on a channel and they do need to go because the next show is about to start. I don't quite know how Netflix are going to present it. I've not seen live content from Netflix. So I, I, I really don't know. I mean, my guess would be that it's going to be its own entity and that it will have whatever space it needs. Um, hopefully, though, WWE don't get all loose. I think, like, hitting your time cues and keeping your segments, like, tight... I think that's really important. If things start going loose and like shows become three hours 10, three hours 15, three hours 20. I mean, we already say that three hours for Raw is too much. So uh, I, I don't know. I don't quite know what we're going to what we're going to get from Netflix. There's a whole lot to talk about there, isn't there? A whole lot to talk about. So love the comment, dudes. Love the comment. Uh, JT and S said Prime. I'm going to. I've seen this comment already. It's got a lot in it. So let's do it a step at a time. Prime. No. I hope he's joking. I agree. I really hate the Prime thing, right? And I must admit, I'm a bit disappointed at how people are just not absolutely appalled by this. For me, we've got something which doesn't need changing. It doesn't need changing, right? The ring is a blank canvas for wrestlers to you know do what they do 
by putting that ugly ass prime bottle on we're not making it a better experience we're not making wwe better for the viewers um you know you can make the argument that maybe there'll be like a bit of color clashing where and you won't be able to quite make things out as they're like pinning people you know if someone's wearing red and they're on a red logo you know like you, you could make those kinds of arguments uh, I, I don't know how much that'll interfere but for me, we're not making things better. We're clearly making things worse. Uh, the only thing I could like compare this to is if WWE came out and announced that every ticket they've got is going to go up by twenty dollars. That's you know, it doesn't. It, they make more money, but it doesn't help us. It doesn't make things better for us. We're the ones that end up losing. That prime bottle looks ugly. I, I could. I said this on the unseen video. If it was just the word prime, maybe I could accept that a bit better maybe that would be a bit more palatable i still wouldn't like it but at least it wouldn't look as ugly as what that logo thing was that they unveiled i mean the idea that you can put something that ugly on the in the ring just for however many millions they've paid uh it's really disappointing to be honest i'd like to think there's some things that some lines that we won't cross i'd like to think there's some, some things that we won't do even vince who loved money right would sell his own parents if he could like even vince drew a line at not doing that you know wcw were putting slim jim logos and stuff on their ring looked ugly uh they were doing that back in the 90s wwe could have done this it's not a new amazing idea that's just come along. This has been around forever. We've never done it. And Vince has always been very clear about not wanting to do it. But it's a new world that we live in now. And there is going to be change. It's just, I suppose my disappointing thing is that this has changed. It's it's not making wrestling better. It's only making it worse. And there's people that are absolutely fine with it. There's some people that love it, that are like big Logan fans and Prime fans, and they love the fact that that ugly-ass logo is in the middle of a WWE ring. So, yeah, I, I agree. I, I also was really hoping it was a joke, and I must admit I thought it was. And then they put that press release out, and I think they've made it quite clear that it's it's not. So part of me wonders if they're sort of measuring the temperature you know, I think if there was a big fan backlash against this, that there would be some altering, you know, maybe we could get it so it's not like colored and all that kind of stuff. You know, maybe it could just be black and white. I don't know. It's, it's awful. It's just awful. I've been watching wrestling since the early 90s. This is a horrible, horrible change. Uh, so uh, that's my piece on it, right? Uh, JTNS said, The Rock, again, highlighting his power. Will Triple H have anything to say? Um, it would be interesting if he did on Monday, but uh, Triple H has tweeted out the graphic, so unfortunately he seems on board with it. So, you know, Triple H kind of making it clear, I'm the one that makes the decisions. Well, that's gone out the window, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> You're right, because he's tweeted the he's tweeted the match out saying the biggest tag match of all time. So he seems fine with the fact the Rock's made the match. Roman is trying to play mind games with Cody to turn on Seth. Um, maybe. I, I, I don't know. I, I could understand, you know, like you could throw the counter that Cody's playing mind games with The Rock. He turned around to The Rock and said, can you make that decision about what match we have? Didn't you acknowledge Roman last week? So, yeah, we may be seeing uh, Roman playing mind games with Seth and Cody. It would make sense to do that. But we are also seeing it the other way round as well. Um, Other way round. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, it could be on both sides, to be honest, but um, definitely it stood out to me more, Cody saying it to The Rock. Uh, why is Jay not getting involved with Jimmy? He comes to Raw and ruins it for him several times. Uh, I think part of it is because there was no way of him getting to Jimmy. So obviously there was a lot of security, added security around. Really the focus on this show was to accept the challenge. So Jimmy wasn't really on his own. He wasn't really available for Jay to attack. It would be uh, cool if we found out that Jay had been at the show. It's just he didn't make any moves because of that added extra security it's gonna happen it's gonna happen jimmy against jay is clearly gonna happen so don't know when uh it could be monday 
To be honest, it could be that Jay's in a match, Jimmy comes and attacks, but only this time Jay's ready for him. Um, and so it could be that he's uh, decided, rather than flying over to wherever SmackDown is, he's just going to set a trap for him on Raw. So it could be something like that. Uh, and the crowds. Uh, yeah, I always have to have the sound turned down, but the crowd sounded pretty good to me, to be honest. Sound crowds, crowd seems pretty vocal and uh, really into it. So um, Texas. Texas, though, has always been a good wrestling crowd. You know, they love their wrestling and they're very passionate uh, people. And so always look forward to when we go to Texas. Uh, Wrestle Darcy said, loved it. KSI is uh, to the RKO triple threat at Mania. Tiffany is, I'll answer it as I'm going along again. Uh, I don't think so. It felt a bit like he was only there to announce the prime sponsorship deal because they actually posed... Uh, in front of the logo with all the people in the background. I think that's why they did it. They wanted that picture of Logan, KSI, the ugly ass bottle and the crowd in the background. So I think that's why he was there. Uh, Tiffany is being booked so good. Uh, loving damage control being led by Dakota. She's bossing it. Yeah, I don't know if she is leading the group, to be honest. I mean, she's their spokesperson, uh, so she is the mouthpiece. But EO was quite clear in saying that this is EO's era. Dakota uh, did refer to herself as being the brains behind the operation. So I don't know. Uh, maybe she's coming across as the leader, but I don't think EO would appreciate uh, you viewing it that way. So, but yeah, she's she's really coming into her own. She seems very comfortable, a lot more comfortable than... I always thought she was quite awkward at times in NXT and even during this run with damage control. Uh, but she's been injured and so she's not really been involved that much. Now they're giving her the spotlight and they're giving her time to talk. I think she really has kind of developed, improved, kicked on. I think she's in a very interesting place and her match with Bailey next week... <sighs> That's going to cook, man. Uh, main segment was too much rock, said Wrestle Darcy. I want Cody Roman to really start cooking now and start taking the main stage. That receipt slap. Yeah, it was good, wasn't it? Yeah, um, uh, I, I find the rock thing interesting. Um, I don't understand why he's got the new entrance. I know people are going to tell me it's because they want Roman to be jealous, but my counterpoint would be, well, there's a million ways to make Roman jealous. I mean, there's so many different ways. I mean, The Rock's got so much stuff going on. You can make Roman jealous just by the fact that Rock keeps getting his own entrance and it's after The Rock. The fact The Rock doesn't come out with Roman, behind Roman, that can annoy Roman. I don't think we need to like make The Rock's electrifying entrance even more electrifying when we're trying to make him a heel. I mean, there were Rocky chants. There are people that are into The Rock. I think we need him to be insulting them. And we need to try and make as many of them as possible into Cody fans, to be honest. Um, it's Cody that should be getting the unanimous support. I just worry that Cody, his star power, you know, it, it's going to struggle against The Rock. So really, we should be like sort of trying to turn The Rock down a little bit. The Rock is The Rock, right? But try and turn him down a bit. Try and turn Cody up. Make Cody cooler. You know, if someone's going to get lightning and like this big dramatic entrance, shouldn't it be Cody Rhodes <laughs> rather than the, the Rock? So I, I, I don't really get that. Making the heels entrance even better, even more iconic, even more electrifying. I, I just don't understand. And and people keep coming back by saying, oh, it's to make Roman jealous. And it's like, yeah, but all you're doing is hurting Cody. You can make Roman jealous like a billion different ways. So, yeah, uh, great comment. Love it. Wrestle Darcy. Uh, JB17 said LA Knight against AJ Styles should happen on SmackDown. And then you could add them to the US title feuds, which hopefully would be a ladder match. I would like that to be a ladder match as well. Yeah, I agree. Brony said, going to be honest, I thought the show was very average, but the main event segment was pretty good, and I was hoping for a bit more. Also, I think we can all agree WWE sponsoring Prime, uh, or Prime sponsoring WWE is a disgrace. We need Gunther versus Logan ASAP. Yep. 
I, I completely agree. I mean, I agree. I think um, I agree with everything there. I think the show was fairly average. It, it, certainly, we can look in a moment at the match scores. They all come out as, as good. So there's no great matches in there. Uh, the sit down interview with Bailey didn't really do much. You know, it, she just kind of said, "I'm going to take down Damage Control." There was a little backstage thing with um, Damage Control. We had the Carrion and the Bobby thing, which to me is just it's feeling flat. I do like Paul Ellerin, right? Uh, I like what he's doing. He looks awesome, like staring menacingly into the... Ca when it's just him and AOP, when they've broken away from this group, they're going to be amazing. Um, but for some reason... And I love Carrion's backstage promos. But uh, for some reason, I think it might be the Street Profits are still not feeling like they're... They still feel like they've always felt, you know? I still don't like the ring gear. I still don't think we've changed them up enough. I think Montez is a big star that's being held back. Do you know, Carrion did a promo, which we put in Unseen, that I completely agreed with. Um, it, Carrion said, like, he thinks that that group needs a new leader. And he said it should be Montez. But we know that he's having to drag Angelo Dawkins around like a dead weight. And also we know that Bobby is not allowing Montez to fulfill his potential. And I agree with all of that. I mean, I, maybe not the dragging Angelo Dawkins part around, but um, I, I do think that Montez is not fulfilling his potential. Um, and I, I really wanted that group to kick on. That like, I thought the Hurt Business 2.0 were going to arrive, and it's just not what we've had, is it? So I, I agree. I think a lot of that show was fairly average, not really much going on. The heartache of the prime announcement was a, a big blow. And then, like, the rest of the show couldn't really pick me up. Um, kind of got me to, uh, I was all right. And then that main event segment was so electrifying, so captivating that really, if it wasn't for that, I think this show would have, would have really struggled. So I agree. I completely agree. Uh, SA said, I enjoyed it. However, I thought the Bailey EO storyline should have got more time and some up more in general. Yeah. We, literally what we just said you know that bailey damage control stuff is so good that um you want to see what the next thing is so to just get a bit of a sit down interview this week i agree i, I wanted that more a bit more as well um right gates and uh, planitia uh rancid corbin said i couldn't fairly give a rating as i was busy with important chores but made sure i tuned in during the bloodline segment i think if they keep giving and giving long segments people will be burned out before mania uh so it's a great thing that this was only 10 minutes okay fair fair play uh knockout news said it was great nice and simple uh are you ready punk said the cross thing is not hitting home i i, I agree i, I really like carrying cross i just don't think this is it this just doesn't feel like it to me um i like the aop i like paul ellerin i just feel like i look at aop and i can see some you know they could just be destroying the tag division and putting on some banging matches um street profits i mean like i, I don't know if like Street Profits and Bobby and BFAB are going to find a way of, like, just changing the things that need changing. I think they need a team name. I think they need new entrance music. I think they need new ring gear. <laughs> like, you know, I think they need, like, a lot of stuff uh, that they've not got at the moment. They just feel very disjointed. That's how I would describe Street Profits and Bobby. So excited when they got together, but it's been months and months and months. I couldn't even tell you when it happened. It was so long ago. Do you remember when they got into Bobby's car? So long ago. And we've just been doing nothing with them, really. It's been, it's been the odd little thing that's been decent. The rest of it's been pretty flat. So, yeah, I agree. Uh, it's, it, it all can be saved. There's too much talent there for it to not be saved. But the creative has got to get a lot more interest in. And I think the uh, both the groups really need to get a bit more fleshed out you know i want to know what aop think about carrion i want to know what carrion thinks about paul ellerin i want to know what paul ellerin why, why don't we have paul ellerin hating scarlet can't stand scarlet thinks that she doesn't bring anything to the group or what if he absolutely loves scarlet thinks she's the best part of the group and uh doesn't like uh carrion holding her back like 
the success of the bloodline was that we dug into the characters and how they interacted. We just haven't really been doing that. That this story needs needs that. So I I agree. Uh, Harry said, "What's up? I hope you're doing well. Love to see how far KSI has come from doing YouTube to being RKO'd by Randy. I think that it's about time now that we all start to think what really happens with Solo after WrestleMania. So many options, and no one is talking about him a lot." Um, well, I think part of that is because we don't quite know what's going to happen. I mean, we don't know if Rock's turning on Roman at WrestleMania. We don't know if Roman's going to retain the title. We don't know if Solo is going to be split between, like, do I join Rock or do I join Roman? Like, um, that would be my guess, is that at some point, Rock and Roman are obviously going to go on different paths. I would imagine it'll be... I'm, I'm hoping for a slow burn. I'm hoping it's not that The Rock turns on Roman at WrestleMania. I'm hoping that it's going to be a case that as time goes by, they drift further apart and there's these little looks, there's these little comments, there's these little, do you know what I mean? Like that to me would be really interesting rather than just boom, tricked you at WrestleMania because I think a lot of people are expecting that. I think if you was to do a poll, is The Rock going to turn on Roman at WrestleMania? I feel like I think the majority would say yes. So I think I would much rather go the other way where we do it as a slow thing. And so Solo then is going to be torn between do I go down that path with The Rock or do I go down that path with Roman? And that could be very interesting. But again, without not quite knowing where we're going to be, it's very hard to predict where Solo is going to be uh, after WrestleMania. Uh, Dean said, I thought SmackDown was good, just not as good as last week. Did not like the Prime bottle on the mat. Hashtag Prime. Boycott Prime. I do like the Boycott Prime thing. It's not going to take off. There's too many Logan fans and too many Prime fans and too many kids. I mean, if you're young, you probably love Logan. Uh, and we know that there's a lot of youngsters that uh, watch WWE. So it's boomers like me that have been watching since the 90s that have always had a lovely clean mat. I, I, I said it earlier, if this change, I'm all right with change, as long as it's making the product better. I'm all right with change, but this doesn't make the product better. It makes WWE a bit more money. They've got money coming in from absolutely everywhere. And plus, how does that affect me? It doesn't affect me. Uh, it, it, you know, it, they're making more money, which they always gloat about. This is the highest grossing. We've got 100 million subscribers. And, you know, they're always gloating about their achievements. So I sort of think, well, you've got so much good stuff going on. Highest grossing shows all the time. Just leave the ring alone, would you? <laughs> I didn't complain about the barricade screens. I didn't complain about the mascots, right? Uh, I wasn't a fan of the adverts on the Titan Tron as the wrestlers came out. Do you remember they tried putting Beyblades up as Austin Theory came out? We had a moan about that. Right. But I will take that. If you said to me now, right, you can you will we'll start doing that again or it's the thing in the ring. I'll be like, oh, God, do the Beyblades thing. Just put that on the screen. I don't want I don't want the thing in the ring. I don't want to have to stare at this thing as like five star matches are going on. There's like a ugly ass prime bottle in the ring. I really don't like it. I really don't like it. So, yeah, I agree. Boycott Prime. I'd love for that to take off, but it's not going to. Uh, a wrestling ring is just not a place for advertising anything. I know, I know, I know. I mean, what I would say is there'll be plenty of people watching going, WCW did it in the 90s, UFC are doing it now. Yeah, but it doesn't make it better. Just because they're doing it, it doesn't make it better. It's not, you know, we, we haven't had it. And so now it's coming in and uh, this is making it a worse product. So... You know, it is what it is. Everyone's going to have their opinions on it. You're not going to change anyone's mind. I think if you hate it, you hate it. If you love it, you love it. That's where we are. Uh, Rico said, I still think it's weird to keep Dakota heel, but it's believable to have her as the new leader. People who keep thinking she's the new leader, I don't get that. I think she's the spokesperson. I think she's the voice. But EO is the women's champion. She is the one that is... Um, you know, the, uh, the the EO era. So for me, I think that Dakota is, as I said, you know, she's the the spokesperson. I would go with that word over leader. But uh, it's very interesting how it's coming across to a lot of people that she's the leader. 
Uh, it's going to be awkward when the others drop their titles and they have to start from scratch. P.S. Congrats to Mike and ba Barry. One more step. Let him in. Yeah, people really want Brayan. People really, really want Brayan. And uh, I think that would be good. I expect him to go in, though. You know, I've said uh, quite a few times he'll go in. I'm not too fussed as to when it is. If it's this year, brilliant. If it's next year, brilliant. I think if we're still sat here in three years time and he's not gone in, then I'll be like... What are we doing? Uh, so I do think it should be at some point over the next couple of years. But, um, yeah, I, I feel pretty good it'll be this year. So, Rico, thank you. Uh, Niall said, Seth wearing the Venga coat. We added this one to uh, Unseen. So, uh, Niall, thank you. Uh, Noli said, unfortunately, Fox cut the viewing short. So, again, I think this uh, is where people didn't see the slap. So uh, it's it's interesting because I keep having these conversations going, no, it's a great ending. And people are like, well, how can you say that? And it's because we saw different endings. So at least we've cleaned up and tidied up as to what happened, you know. Uh, Ryan said, I thought SmackDown was great. KSI took the RKO like a pro. However, I really don't like the prime in the middle of the ring for PLEs. I know. We keep coming back to it as well, but it's like, I, I do find myself thinking, what can we do about it? How do we stop this? How do we stop this? But I just don't think there is a way of stopping it unless everyone came together and did the whole boycott prime thing and really made like, you know, the, their voices heard. But I'm just not seeing that level of anger that I think I was really hoping was going to be there. There's lots of people making memes. There's lot. I mean, I'm seeing way more people that hate it than like it. Right? No doubt about that on my timeline. No doubt about that. Um, why would you like it? I mean, there's not really much to like, is there? As I said, it doesn't make wrestling better. But um, what I'm not getting is that 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 anger, you know. I'm not. I'm just not seeing that. So I think I've woken up today, kind of thought to myself, well, you've uh, you've got to accept it, really. You know, I know it's very defeatist, but um, I'm 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 reading the room. I think the and the room is telling me that people don't like it, but not to the point where they're getting the pitchforks out, you know. Uh, but Rizzo said great final segment it was a perfect way to end the show we all want more don't we and yeah true and uh, don't mess with my ring Logan exposing shout out to you yeah we tried to get that one going I mean boycott prime was probably snappier right than don't mess with my ring Logan <laughs> but um, you know at this point we were just trying anything Botched eye surgery said the rock hugs the mic. Seth got him good with the midlife crisis joke, though. Nothing to write home about. I wish we had a little brawl at the end, though, with Rock and Cody. Uh, Mitchell said this SmackDown felt like it ran out of time. I'm not sure if it was just me, but it felt like I shut off right when the rock was about to respond. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what you saw. I mean, for me, the slap hit, the rock was like, and yeah, I mean, if that's the bit where you thought it, the rock was about to come back with some, oh my God, I want to see more. He actually doesn't. Um, granted, they're off air at that point. He just like looks at Cody, gives him evils, gives him daggers and, you know, the rock's music hits and off he walks. So rock's response will be next week. It'll, it'll just set up for next week. So uh, for me, as I said, the slap oh my god what's just happened did you see that blah 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 show comes to an end oh my god that's how it's ended uh, that that's fine for me that's fine for me uh so he said it was pretty good about time that cody slapped the shiz out the rock's mouth eight out of ten dark nightmare said there's no way they cut off after cody slapped the rock right in his face no they did uh verico said i don't have much but i'll say it was cinema uh brandon acknowledging shout out to you watson said i said last week that seth should be replaced by stone cold or cena but really why is it not jay he was tag champ with cody and it would be against his cousins plus he is one of the most over on the roster i get he will probably be having a match with jimmy but it makes the most sense well i think you've answered it to be honest i think he's having a match with jimmy isn't he and, you know, it, they maybe could have him work twice. 
um, because that seems to be the trend this year. But I think they want to get Seth into that main event. You know, Seth, I think, would have main evented night one with CM Punk, but CM Punk got injured. And so I think they really want Seth to have that moment. And they want, obviously, The Rock to have that moment. I don't know why they just didn't do Rock versus Seth. Instead, we're doing this tag match. But um, I think that's part of the reason. I think Seth getting Seth into the main event is a, is a motivator for them. Robert said, arguably one of the best shows of the year. Uh, P.S. I now need to see Gunther's reaction to the Prime sponsorship as the mat is no longer sacred. Uh, Vetrix says, electrifying. Angie said, did you happen to notice Roman when The Rock was doing his turnbuckle thing and the crowd was cheering for The Rock? He still doesn't seem like he's completely sold on The Rock being loyal to him, as does Paul, but he has been suspicious of The Rock for a bit. Uh, I didn't, but I could. And I think that's the right reaction for Roman. I think Roman is the tribal chief. He is the leader of the WWE universe. And I think that The Rock getting his own entrance, it's it being, you know, still as big as what it is, him coming out after Roman, like, I, I really don't think that's something that Roman should be pleased about. So if he is showing that he's still a bit disgruntled about it, good. I, I think that's exactly how he should be reacting. So definitely something worth keeping an eye on, though, Angie. So shout out to you. Uh, Prakar said not somewhat related to SmackDown, but on the 11th, it'll be two years since Big E's injury. It would be great if he can make a return on Monday in some capacity. Well, I don't know that I need to have it like, you know, on the two year anniversary of when it happened. I don't know that's an anniversary that I want to acknowledge, but it would be great if he could be at, say, WrestleMania. I'd be down for that, you know. Two years, though. That's amazing, isn't it? Two years since that um, uh, accident, injury, incident, however you want to word it. Uh, Nexa said, it's been a while since I've watched a weekly show, had another hour to work with. It was maybe even too packed for its own goods. The only negative is the sacred mat being primed. Yeah, I mean, it is filling my heart reading this and people still coming back with the same comments, you know. It is, uh, I've got to tell you, it, it is not been brilliant reading the reaction on twitter because i really did expect there to be a lot of negativity a lot of anger a lot of people really being off with this and it is there but it's not loud enough it's not angry enough it's not do you know what i mean people i think are just like oh god i can't believe they're doing this it's garbage and that's it on to the next conversation you know which is probably the healthy way to look at it, to be honest. That's probably how I should be looking at it. And as I said, I've kind of woke up today with that mentality of, do you know what I mean? It's not worth getting upset about. I mean, it probably is, but I'm not going to get upset about it. Even though I've spent about half an hour crying about it. <laughs> <laughs> Male Tail Thongs said another great Smackdown, but I was not very happy with The Rock's cross dresser reference. Uh, shake my head. Overall, I'll give it a solid 8.25 power bombs out of 10. Yeah, I've seen a little bit on that actually. And when he said it, immediately it catches your ear, doesn't it? So I, I think it was Roman that said it. I agree. I think that for me, it's not a. Uh, I don't want to say not a massive deal, but it's not really a massive deal because, you know, people aren't really making it a massive deal. I think that it was, I'm going to say he misspoke. That's what I'm going to go with, right? I'm going to say that he misspoke. Uh, I'm going to say that, you know, he, I think like calling someone a crossdresser back in the day, uh, that's the kind of thing that people did. Um, and I think that he just hasn't quite moved with the times, if you will. It's kind of hard to say because, like, it's it's a weird one because you are sort of having a having a go at the uh, like the trans community, if you will. You're kind of saying that uh, Seth's a crossdresser, and that's like a negative thing. So I totally understand why people don't wouldn't like it. 
Uh, for me, I think I've sort of just gone, I don't think he quite meant that. I really don't think Roman's got an issue with the trans community, right? Uh, I don't think he's transphobic. I think he's just come out and said it as a way of kind of poking fun at Seth, who isn't a crossdresser. But he's he's done it as like saying, well, you know, you look like a crossdresser. But when you actually analyze it and you go, well, what does that mean? It means that apparently like cross-dressing should be seen as a negative thing. Now, everyone's going to have their own opinions and whatever. My opinion is it's your life. You live your life. As long as you're not affecting other people, you live your life, right? So uh, that's my take on it. But it's been, it has been very interesting to see the reaction to it because there are, you can tell that people don't want to make a massive deal out of it because I, I think people don't feel that Roman is transphobic, right? So people are sort of like, what, what I'm seeing is people going, what did you think about the cross dress? <laughs> like people are like, I want to, I want to gauge the room. What do you think about it? Um, and I've not really seen people coming out going, this is a disgrace. I'm sure if I really search for it, I might find that. This is a disgrace. Can't believe you said this. Like you should be supporting like the trans community and all that sort of stuff. I haven't seen that. Instead, I've seen people going, what did you think of this? Like, you know, so yeah, I hope I worded that correctly. It's it's difficult, isn't it? I mean, this is the problem, isn't it? Like, I've just said my opinion on it there. And even I'm sat here going, oh, I hope people don't take things I've said wrong or out of context or so easy in this day and age. Certainly when you're talking about subjects like that that are very, very sensitive, you know. Um, that's why I think when Ro um, Roman came out with that line, it, it proper caught the ear. Proper was like, oof. You know, of all the things he could have said, all the insults he could have thrown... That probably was not the wisest one, was it? So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I agree. Uh, Metal Tail Thongs. Uh, overall, give the show 8.25. Alice said, I feel bad for Bailey not being able to main event at Mania. Uh, they'll throw a co-main event as a consolation prize, but it doesn't feel the same. It's a minor quibble in the long term. Yeah, no, that's fair. Uh, Lover to you said the show was pretty average besides the bloodline segment 6.5 out of 10 the one thing I really didn't like was no Jay what are they doing why aren't they building that feud not gonna lie their rivalry might not be as good as we think it would be if they keep this up well I think we sort of answered that I mean I think that the focus of this show was to get the answer to the tag match I think that they will find a, a space for Jay to finally confront Jimmy I just think this was maybe not the show for that to happen um, so we'll see what happens on Monday we'll obviously see what happens next week on Smackdown we've still got time still got plenty of time so uh, I wouldn't abandon hope yet. We're clearly going to get the match, and I think we'll... And we've already started the build. I mean, it's been a couple of times that Jay's been attacked now, so we've already started that build. So it'll get there. We'll get there. Charles said, first and foremost, I despise WWE for cutting it. That, that was cinema. I'm happy Lee is back. I'm somewhat okay with the logo. Uh, is that logo? In the ring. And random, but Tony D'Angelo wins at Stand and Deliver. Okay. Uh, I'm somewhat okay. The logo thing is going to bug me. I'm somewhat okay with the logo in the ring. I, I, I don't know why, or I don't know how. I don't know. I, I don't get why people would be okay with it. Right. I, I, I don't understand that unless you are like a Logan fan and you just love Prime and you love Logan. And it's like, yeah, that's really cool. We're stamping our mark. That's part of the problem, though, isn't it? I think is that a lot of us don't like Prime, and don't like Logan. Maybe if it maybe if it was the Nike swoosh, that would be a bit better. Maybe if it was, I don't know. I, I don't know. Anything, anything. Walmart. Uh, it might be better. Target. Target would be all right, actually. That would be quite cool in the center of the ring. That would be really cool. Target should sponsor them. That would be better. But um, I think just this ugly-ass bottle of Prime, man. Ugh, it's, oh, it's so ugly. So, um, and moving on, Tony wins at Standard Liver. I think you're right. I think Tony wins and Elia then goes to the main roster. So that's what I'm hoping for. Maybe the Raw after WrestleMania. Uh, Wrestling Visionary said I loved it but I need WWE to end their partnership with Fox 
Well, it is coming to an end. Uh, Kian says, there ain't no way that Prime Matt thing is going to stick, right? Surely they ain't serious and they're trolling. It looks, it looks serious, but... Uh, Joey said, it was a great show. I felt like there was a lot of build to Mania. I don't know how I feel about them starting to put sponsors on the ring. Guys, if you've watched this video and you've thought, God, will he just shut up about this Prime thing? It's because everyone is feeling the same. Like, this is what a lot of people are saying but it's just people have not come together and united and started to you know rebel i would love for that to start today we we got the whole we want cody thing so can we do the whole boycott boycott prime thing and get that going so yeah you know i i completely agree uh phoenix said forgot that carry and cross existed first two segments were great i've outgrown the rock shtick would be fine if it potentially was going to ruin the only thing i genuinely care about and that is cody winning the title okay uh muse said whole show felt a bit short i think because we all wanted to see the bloodline cody segments unfortunately they can't trust those segments to open the show due to time because last smackdown was awesome we were riding the high of that amazing open yeah they went over 10 minutes and so they've moved them to the end now so it's like you've been a na you've been naughty boys so um you'll go on at the end and if you overrun well the show will cut off so, I mean, listen, they're not hitting their time cues. So you can blame WWE, but The Rock is... You, you just can't please everyone. You know, there's people saying that those segments go too long and they're too draining, right? And that they don't want to see, like, 20, 30-odd minute segments like that. Then there's other people that absolutely love them and want to see more. Then there's other people that are like put them at the end so that if they overrun it or cut it off but then when it cuts it off people are like oh my god i wanted to see more why did they cut it off right but then if they put it at the start it overruns and then it starts to eat into the rest of the show and then we turn around and say oh yeah the rest of the show needed a bit more time like it's crazy in it to me to me it would make sense that this bloodline story rock and all of that was on the three hour show raw rather than the two hour show smackdown where we've got to try and fit in like a women's division a tag division like a mid card uh uh situation like you know we've got all this stuff we're trying to fit in like taking like half an hour 40 minutes out of that show leaving just an hour and 20 minutes god knows how long that is once you take the adverts out to try and tick off all these boxes for me we're doing this on the wrong show it should be happening over on Raw. But I know that Fox, again, it's money. It's always money that ruins everything. Fox are the ones that uh, obviously pay the most money for SmackDown. And so they want the biggest stars. So that's why we've, uh, we are where we are, you know. Uh, Billy says, um, 9.8 out of 10. Rock Bloodline looked amazing. My favorite, Dakota, did perfect as always in the promo. We have a year revolution now. It's also time for a King Kota movement. Uh, well, let's see how she does. I mean, she's back. Uh, obviously, she's just getting back into the ring. Um, people are obviously really enjoying the work that she's doing. And I think that match against Bailey is going to be really good. I think she's made improvements since her NXT days, which you would expect. And um, let's see. Yeah, let's get her up and going and let's see where we go. Uh, Henry said, Days, this is cinema. It's a great time to be a wrestling fan. But the way The Rock is reacting with stuff, I think he will turn on Roman on night one. Uh, Hawkins Jr. said, Did anyone else notice in the promo tonight that when The Rock says you will never get a shot at this, he points to himself ever again? I find it quite interesting. It was right before he starts talking directly about Cody's family. It was interesting i didn't i'll have to go back and have a look at that you'll never get a shot at this okay guys so i've jumped over onto uh wwe's youtube channel and uh i want to have a look at that moment so here is the rock he says you will never ever and in a moment he's going to give that kind of thumb gesture get another opportunity at this that's it there 
that was it. That that just that little moment. I think he's pointing over his shoulder for me. Yeah, at this, I can see from the camera angle why it looks like he's pointing at himself. But I think for me, it's going over the shoulder. At this. So, yeah, I think for me, it's going over the shoulder. But I can totally understand why uh, it, people would think and why it looks like he's pointing towards himself. So, Hawkins Jr., well spotted. Um, I don't think that quite aligns for me, but no, uh, something to keep an eye on. Right, let's go over to the matches, shall we? Uh, this is how they scored, and it wasn't brilliant. So they, uh, we only had four, and they all came out as good. So, uh, and like only one though was 97% good, which it's not great. And to be honest, I mean, it's clearly not great. It's good. We've definitely had better episodes for in-ring action. Amazingly though, if we look at the show score, it's currently coming out there. That's quite a surprise to me. I think the secret here is that final segment. And it seems like they can do a bit of a mid-show, if you will. A show that's, you know, the matches aren't being very well received. The backstage segments are okay. But um, the final segment has really kind of changed it. That final 10 minutes, I think, has really elevated it from where I personally think it would sit, which is probably much further down here. Uh, I'd have, I'd pro for me personally, I'd have it in this range. But um, I think that that success of that final segment, you know, the fact we had The Rock and Roman and Cody and Seth, I feel like I feel like it was an amazing segment, but I don't know that it was an amazing show. So it's very interesting, though. That's where it's going at the moment. Um, it's going into this great range here, like bang in the middle of great. So that's where uh, that's going. Let's get back to the comments and see if we can work our way through some uh, uh, final ones. So Nando said, I like Tiffany's showcase. The matches were quite forgettable. Love Rock Roman. I know you don't like how cool Rock is, but I think the Bloodline has always been a cool group. I always liked how even though Seth seems an afterthought, the crowd chanting his music and he had a great promo. Jim said it was interesting that The Rock smiled after being slapped, like was intentionally provoking Cody. It, that's interesting. It's just a shame it ended when it started getting good. Paul Loden said not happy that they seem to have called on Tiffany versus Bianca, possibly because of the positive crowd reactions. Tiffany has been one of the most prominent women since the Rumble. 5-0 uh, and o on SmackDown, MVP at Elimination Chamber, press events, yet she'll be in catering if they've pivoted away. Noob and Co. TV said, fun show. Main event segment was exciting. Thought the damage control versus Bailey story has now got my attention. Speed Gaming said the ending was cool. Wrestle Dank said, Rock, Roman, Cody and Seth segment should have been way longer. The Tiffany and Legarda del Fantasma match should have been cut, cut in my opinion. LA Rick said, I'll be honest, they've just ruined the whole segment by cutting it short and ending the program. That's the problem with America sports, an advert every 20 seconds, and they stopped when it heated up. Chris said, The Rock was in the middle of laying into Cody when my local news switched on, and I was like, what? I rushed to get to WWE's YouTube to catch those last two minutes. Man, that segment was fun. And OMG, The Rock's updated entrance that was badass. Uh, this picture is hilarious. So, uh, Chris, shout out to you. Oh, yes, let's go. Look at this. Gio the Theo said, I honestly feel like a lot of the build to WrestleMania 40 is a bit off. Yes, we have Rock, Cody, Roman, Seth build going great. But a lot of these shows leading up to WrestleMania like tonight have only been building up two matches. I feel like Triple H needs to pick up the pace. Uh, I, I wasn't sure we were going to get through all these, but I think we've done really well here. Jordan said the prime partnership is a disgrace and Cody slapping the rock was great to build up the match even more. Uh, Days, do you think we get some after the show? 
what do you mean after smack there was nothing after smackdown so i put what footage there was into unseen and basically you know they confront each other the rocks music hits and they walk away i feel like the slap was meant to like for you to want more I, that's what it was aimed to do so i think people saying like oh man we were just getting good and then they cut it off well, well that's the same with like the season finale isn't it of like a tv show like oh my god we just got to the bit i want and then they cut it off so that you tune into episode one of the next season like that's how tv works so uh for me the slap and ended it there brilliant um so it, is there more next week next week is when you get more so uh the only bit that happened was the rocks music played and he left the ring uh kian said i thought it was an all right show i think the tag match with owens and orton against wallet and theory was a good match logan's promo was bad me chin and tiffany was okay dragon lee and angel was okay cody seth rock roman segment was good and i can't wait for raw so there we go lots of opinions lots of thoughts theories and loads of stuff in there for you on this one i hope you enjoyed uh this episode we know where the show is ranking in the community we know how the community feels about the matches we know what the community liked we know what the community didn't like lots of thoughts lots of theories lots of questions lots of opinions and we will be back on monday with another one of these as soon as raw ends i'll put the post up i want your feedback and we'll do another one of these uh for raw as we continue on the road to wrestlemania thanks for watching appreciate the support i'll see you next time Bye for now.